In January 1965, two young aircraft mechanics failed to cause hundreds of casualties in a stunt that remains a mystery until today. It is obvious what they did, but why they did it is completely unexplainable. Let me take you back to the year 1965. It's a cold and rainy winter evening at the Dutch Navy Air Base Valkenburg, near The Hague. A group of young Navy men have spent their evening off in the airbase mess. Shortly after 11 p.m. they head back to the barrack. When most of the men get ready for bed, Huub van Oostende and Frans Bolk, both 21, leave the barrack and disappear into the night. They cross the airfield towards the platform where the standby planes are parked. As they get noticed by the guard, they tell him that there is an emergency and they have orders to prepare a Lockheed Neptune, tail number 212. Initially, the guard believes them, but when he notices that the runway lights are not lit, which is part of the emergency routine, he gets superstitious. He walks to the nearest phone post and calls his superior, who isn't aware of any emergency either. A few minutes later, the guard gets a call back from his superior, ordering him to stop the mechanics off. The guard rushes back to the plane, only to see it taxiing to the end of the runway. All he can do is watch the mechanics, who are neither authorized nor qualified to fly any plane at all, accelerate the Neptune and take off. The illegal flight only lasts a few minutes. Once airborne, the mechanics lose control over the plane. It stalls, turns its nose downwards and starts an unstoppable dive toward the nearby fishing town of Katwijk. The Neptune just misses the village and crashes into the North Sea, a few hundred meters off the coast. Both mechanics are killed on impact. The incident is sad enough as it is, but it fails to turn into a horrible disaster. It's just past midnight, most people are at home in their beds sleeping. Filled with 10,000 liters of fuel, the Neptune is a flying Molotov cocktail. If it would have crashed on Katwijk, tens or probably even hundreds of innocent people would have been killed. The investigation commission only needs a few days to conclude that the plane jacking was a drunk man's stunt. Case closed. But looking at the facts, it is plain to see Elko had nothing to do with this strange incident. How drunk must a man get to believe he can fly and land a plane, something he never did before? And even if both men were pissed enough to think they were capable of doing so, they would never have been able to prepare the Neptune. Very complicated job. And even if, at least one of the two would have stopped the other from killing both of them. I traced five of the Navy men who were there that night, including the guard who tried to stop the Neptune off. Even though it's been more than half a century, all of them have clear memories of that fateful night. All five of them know for sure that the mechanics were not drunk. They might have had a few beers, but were clear and sober enough when they left the barrack. Meaning they must have been aware of the enormous risk they were taking by getting that plane into the air. Was it common suicide? Hardly believable. Neither of them was known to be troubled. Franz had ambitions to become a pilot. Hype was very happy with his fiancée and saving money to get married. Sure, a man can short circuit, but the odds of that happening simultaneously to both men are to be neglected. Suppose they did have a few beers, enough for them to believe they'd be fine flying that plane. Even then, the half an hour walk through the cold and pouring rain would have been more than enough to sober them up. So if booze wasn't the reason these two young guys volunteered into a certain death, what was? Some of the witnesses remember Huib and Frans behaving strangely that night, sticking together in a secretive manner and Huib selling personal artifacts for little money. After I published this story in a magazine, I got a message from another witness who had a theory. At the time the Lockheed Neptune was somewhat outdated. Some users like Libya and Portugal were excluded from the updates for political reasons. My new witness suggested that both mechanics were hired to steal a plane to copy the update, together with a qualified pilot. When the latter didn't show up and the guard discovered the theft, Huib and Frans panicked and saw no other escape than fleeing in the plane. It is true that the very Neptune they stole, tail number 212, actually just had the update a few days before. But to what price would two ambitious young navy men have ruined their future? And would I be naive enough to believe one could simply steal a military plane and fly it all the way to Portugal or Libya without being intercepted? The mystery why these two young men chose to fly to their death will probably never be solved. But it is true that if their plane would have stalled only seconds earlier, this long forgotten tragedy would have been a world shocking disaster.